So in the previous video and flowchart, we looked at homeostasis, specifically via this mechanism known as osmoregulation. And the basis of that video and flowchart was really more on the simple organism side. What we want to shift gears towards now is looking at homeostasis, same mechanism, osmoregulation, but instead on more of a complex animal side. So in order to do that, we'll entitle this next flowchart the same thing, homeostasis, and this is specifically, again, steady state. How are we achieving steady state? It's via this mechanism known as osmoregulation. So osmoreg for short, and this will just be Roman numeral 2. So if we remember from the previous video, osmoregulation just means regulating of solutes and H2O, whether that's coming into the environment, in from the environment, into the organism, or out from the organism to the environment. The goal of this process of osmoregulation is to simply regulate the internal environment by exchanging with the external environment. How are we going to do that? That's again through osmoregulation. And how are we going to look at this? Or what are we going to look at this in now? This is going to be, and I'm putting this in quotes because again, complexity is relative to whoever you're speaking to, but we're generally going to consider this next flowchart looking at complex animal osmoregulation. So this is where we actually would fall uh, under as well as plants. So we'll look at plants and humans. So to begin, let's look at how plants accomplish this very, very important task of osmoregulation, this task that helps ensure their homeostasis. Plants are going to be organisms that colonized land. If we remember from our studies of animal diversity and also plant diversity, we saw that plants originally started off in water as probably unicellular protists similar to caraphytes and green algae, part of Archaeplastida. But once they colonize land, we start to get land plants. And once we get land plants, we start to see really unique adaptations. Uh, we say that these plants adapted for a land lifestyle. And in order to say that, we can just say a terrestrial lifestyle. That's what we mean by land living. So now they have these adaptations for terrestrial life. Part of those adaptations will be directly related to their osmoregulatory capabilities and processes. How so? Remember, even though they colonize land and now they're terrestrial, they still have a really important connection to water in the sense that they still require water for very important life harboring processes throughout the plant kingdom and world, even on land. So remember, we started off in water, Colonized land still require land, still require water, even though we had that colonization of land. How do we ensure water is within a plant? We have a many different adaptations and mechanisms that we can look at. A cuticle is one really famous example. This is a waxy covering on the outside of the plant that helps keep H2O in. And remember, when we're talking about osmoregulation, we're talking about the regulation of solutes and water with the goal of regulating the internal environment and exchanging with the external environment. Right now, we're not trying to do any exchange. We're actually trying to keep water within the plant. A cuticle helps do that. But what if you want to move water within the plant? When you want to move water within the plant, this is when we get vascular tissue that's going to be involved. Vascular tissue plays a critical role in plant physiology. That's plant function uh, because it moves H2O, moves water all throughout the plant. And then also we notice that plants still require water even at their very, very early stage. If we look at seed plants, any of the gymnosperms or angiosperms, both of those broad classes of plants that live on land absolutely need H2O, once again, for germination. And remember, germination is just that initial sprouting of the seed. How do they start their life? They need to be watered. They need to be put in the correct environment. All of this connection to water is a very much an osmoregulatory connection that plants still have, even though they're adapted for terrestrial life. And then finally, we'll close on our homeostasis osmoregulation by looking at humans. That's us. So humans are relatively complex animals, you could say. Uh, and of course, plants aren't animals here, but we'll just say complex osmoregulation. Uh, humans are also terrestrial, okay? So humans are terrestrial. They are land-dwelling. But I think it's really interesting to see that we have very clear, 
very, very obvious connections to water, okay? But very clear aquatic origins is how I'll put it. So these are origins, meaning that we once had very much aquatic lifestyles. How can we prove this? Take a look at our internal environment. That's part of our osmoregulation, right? Internal environment of humans, so internal ENV for environment, is very much, very much H2O based. You get that, you know, random fun fact that everybody likes to, uh, you know, throw around 75% of you is made of water or whatever, whatever that number is. Just get the idea that most of the internal environment that a human is, most of the, the stuff that a human is, is very much water-based. And again, why is that? Because water-based internal environment is a way to control osmoregulation. It's a way to maintain osmoregulatory balance in this overall maintenance of balance called homeostasis. For example, when you have an internal water-based environment, this helps regulate, that's a big word in this whole lecture, regulate, gas exchange for one, because gases can diffuse and uh, dissolve in the water. Uh, pH is going to be directly associated with water because water is a universal solvent and it can very much affect pH. And also nutrient exchange uh, is going to occur through a water medium of some sort. So N-U-T-R for nutrient, and then exchange, and then there's a bunch of other things. I'll just write, etc. So our internal environment is very much water-based for those reasons. And then finally, if we look at our terrestrial adaptations, what we'll notice is again that connection to water even though we are now land dwelling. Why is this? Because osmoregulation is happening. So some terrestrial adaptations to be aware of. Humans are part of the amniotes, meaning that they actually have or undergo or possess an amniotic sac during development. And remember, an amniotic sac contains amniotic fluid, and therefore you see it once again, even during something as important as development, we have a connection, an aquatic origin known as the amniotic sac. Uh, and then also we can summarize and really sort of close off humans by saying that we have, I like to consider, very fancy water balance mechanisms. Again, balance is a big theme of homeostasis. Maintenance of that balance is a big theme of any homeostasis, uh, and this is what we do specifically for our own osmoregulation in parentheses here. What do I mean by fancy? What classifies us as fancy? Well, first of all, we have this really nice exterior covering known as skin, uh, or even, let's say, scales in some organisms. Uh, that's going to be important in keeping water within the internal environment, but also we're going to have some sort of exchange process occurring, uh, and we'll actually have a whole lecture on this idea. We have a really complex, uh, very nice excretory system that's highly evolved, that's highly developed uh, to allow us to undergo osmoregulation in a very fancy way, as I like to think of it. So these are more complex organisms that undergo osmoregulation, so we can actually take off the animal part here, because plants, of course, aren't animals. But that, look, that covers our look at homeostasis via osmoregulation.